the specific effects of one of these changes, whether it be a non-disjunction of chromosomes or other changes such as a change in chromosome structure or a gene mutation. The effects of these would then vary throughout an individual's body if they were a mosaic. Different embryonic cells will make different contributions to the future individual. So early in embryonic development, tissues known as ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm develop. And each of these tissues then makes unique, specific contributions to the future individual. If cells in one of these tissues possessed an abnormal number of chromosomes or a specific gene mutation or whatever, then the effects of that would be different than if this change occurred in a different tissue layer. Thus, in mosaics, the effects of a specific change would depend upon which cells in an individual's body were thus expressing the abnormal chromosomes or the gene mutation or whatever the change might be. Mosaicism can affect many features and not be related at all to gender. If, however, certain cells are expressing only X chromosome material and are essentially female, while other cells possess a Y chromosome and are male, then an individual can be referred to as a gynandromorph. If the mosaicism of a gynandromorph affects their gonads, then one could observe one testis and one ovary, and an individual could be a true hermaphrodite. A single gonad could possess both X-bearing ovarian cells and Y-bearing testicular cells and therefore be referred to as an ovotestis. Sometimes gonads fail to develop and are known as streak gonads being filled with only fibrous connective tissue. Thus, mosaicism can cause an individual to be a combination of male and female cells, including the possibility of male and female gonadal tissue.